Okay, fellas, I'm back with another video. Today we have a lot of news, bro. I just wait a little bit, and then so much interesting news piles up that I can't help but cover it. So it's only been a few days, but there's so much stuff. I'm gonna try my best to go over it as best as I can. As always, I'm gonna have everything timestamped below so you can skip around to whatever you want. And I will link all the sources so you can check it out yourself and give credit where credit is due. Why don't we start out with some memes? So this is pretty funny, but this is from the Steam Deck subreddit from user Nuclear Winter XXX. So this is him describing uh, encounters with people while using the Steam Deck. Some kids will come up and say, like, is that a Switch? It's a Steam Deck. What does it play? Everything. <laughs> So I thought that was cool. I don't go outside, so I don't have this. All right, we're going into new hardware now. This is from user Bass Derek, or Bass Derek, you can't tell. And this is uh, some pictures of the Game Force Ace. So if you wanted to know what it looked like, here are some nice pictures. Here's the gallery here, and he did a little bit of a teardown, so you can see the internals now. All the way down here. I mean, it kind of looks standard nowadays. I feel like everything looks the same. But yeah, if you're interested, you can take a look at that. And then now, here's some problems with the Game Force Ace. This is from user Zexel on OCE. And there's a huge list of problems. Uh, L1 and R1 are horrible. That's not good. Uh, there's a home and app switcher, but no back button. Yeah, there's a list of problems here, and this kind of leads into buyer advice too, but you probably do not want to be um, a first adapter or early adapter of a device, because that is when it has the most problems, and then they see all the problems, and they iron them out for the next revisions. So I don't think there's any benefit for getting a handheld early unless you are making reviews on them. And uh, that is the only reason I can think of of buying something early. You lose nothing by waiting for a better version of the hardware and software. Um, you know, it's like already enough of a gamble buying a device by itself, but buying the first version of the device, mm, that's going to be rough. Okay, here we have the Retro Tech Dad going over Switch emulation performance on the Retro Pocket 4 Pro with Yuzu. And uh, yeah, it runs pretty okay, but not <laughs> as well as you think. So when you look at the video, regardless, I he's running most of them at half the native resolution in handheld mode. So in handheld mode, the games are going to look um, less visually pleasing, and uh, it's at half the resolution. So the surprising thing is there's a lot of games that are playable if you're willing to make it look kind of crappy. But it's kind of surprising to see how far Switch emulation has gone. But yeah, some people might be okay with this. So I just thought I mentioned it. You can go watch the video to see how the games are actually performing. Okay, this one I thought was interesting. I'm going to go to Costco myself and see if they have this. But this is from user Mamerson2023. This is an Atari emulation kind of console. And it's $30, but it's a huge YMMV. YMMV means your mileage may vary, so it's not for every Costco. Not every Costco has this device, and if they do, it may not be $30. But custom firmware has rolled out, and you can just use it as an emulation station. I read posts where people were able to connect just a wired Xbox controller to it and use it to emulate up to Super Nintendo. So it doesn't seem to be very pop, uh, powerful. But I'm going to take a look at it, and if I can get my hands on one, uh, I'll install the custom firmware. Apparently, Brad from the 80s uh, made this possible. I don't know if that's a proper person to give credit to, but if it's 30 bucks and you get, like, a little console, why not? <laughs> you know? Depends on your budget. It may be for the kids, you know? Or something to travel around with if it has HDMI out. All right, now we're going into buyer advice. This is from user Super Annoyed Citizen on the Amber Nick. Uh, subreddit i have the 353v my memory card got corrupted and all the default games are gone friends every person says this and i've seen people who are longtime users on this subreddit actually give advice to use the stock sd card that is the worst advice ever it may work 
The problem is if it worked for a long time and you've ac accumulated a lot of save files and then it dies, all of that is gone if you don't back it up. So in my opinion, it doesn't make sense to roll the dice. It doesn't make sense to play roulette with your SD card. Just get a new one and make sure you don't buy a counterfeit one. There's so many posts where SD cards get corrupted. This is from user Nintengbo <laughs> okay, on the Ambernix subreddit. And he's an RG35XX where it just powers up and then nothing happens. Turns out the stock SD card failed. And then they tell the dude to buy a new SD card slash garlic. I don't think you have to use custom firmware or a custom operating system. I'm, I just need the games to run and just need safe states to work. So as long as it does that, then that's fine. But yeah, it worked. So the SD card was a problem, fellas. <laughs> you, get, you gotta get a new SD card. There was another post where uh, I think a dad was helping his son play uh, Pokemon Fire Red or whatever. And then they lost hours of progress because the SD card crapped out. Like that's, that's the risk you gotta, you gotta be willing to take. All right, this is another post from user Homo Erectus Head, and this is describing how the games would fit with integer scaling. And once again, uh, if you're a stickler for this, that's fine. But for people coming in, I don't want them to get the wrong information. So systems have a native aspect ratio and a native resolution. For example, the Super Nintendo's native resolution is eight by seven. It's not four by three. But that said, you don't want to use the native resolution and aspect ratio as the proper settings to run the game at. You want to make sure that you run the settings for whatever output was being used at the time, which was CRTs for most of these handheld consoles. And that is a uh, aspect ratio four by three. And the pixels are not square, they're rectangular, so there's a stretch. And so if you want, you can go into this thread. There's a lot of YouTubers covering this. I mentioned this in the previous video. But uh <laughs> There's some really cool stuff where developers would account for the pixel stretch on a 4x3 CRT screen and then make the graphics as such so that when it gets stretched, it looks normal. There's also cool stuff where they develop specifically for their hardware. Here's an example here from user Snoopets1826. Yeah, Game Boy Wave Race, which used the poor pixel response of the display to fake water transparency by flipping the pixels on and off every other frame. And then there's something about the adjusting the colors to look better because the screen was terrible. There's no backlighting. I still remember playing on the Game Boy Advance. It's so hard to see. <laughs> okay. I had the OG one. I needed the backlight, but yeah. And then later Game Boy games let you switch the color space if you have a backlit screen. So the hardware itself has nuances and then the display it's outputting to has nuances as well. So it doesn't make sense to me to be a purist about this because if you're a real purist, you will play on the original hardware on a CRT screen and actually use the physical cartridges or a really good flash card. Um, everything else is not going to match that. So it doesn't make sense to be a stickler about this. The only important thing is, does it look good to you? And is the screen big enough? That's it. That's the most important thing. None of this stuff really matters. Okay, now we have user Dr. Popcorn. Corn? Dr. Popcoin on the Odin handheld subreddit. And this guy was asking, is this a virus? So I just put this up because I wanted people to be careful if you are using a handheld with Android as the operating system, you want to make sure you don't download the APKs from a shady website. So if you see the screen, this is fake and most likely you have an infected file on your device. If you go down, uh, there's a couple ways you can get this. Sometimes it's just a pop up on a browser you can just close the browser and close all the tabs. Or there might be a blank APK with no name on it and you got to find it and uninstall it. So that was uh, some great advice from user Skylands420. Uh, make sure you stay safe, fellas. Get your APKs, get your ROMs, get your files from a trusted source. This reminds me, you can get infected files anywhere. I remember on the Datafrog, I think it was the Datafrog subreddit, there was a person who posted like custom booting images, but the file had a virus because I was, I was downloading it. And uh, my browser stopped it because it said it was infected. 
So I'm going to give the poster the benefit of the doubt and maybe it got infected when they uploaded it to the hosting site. But you can't just trust some dude on the internet. Um, that's why I'm a little iffy when I download these custom utilities. If it's open source, I can look through the code myself and then compile it myself and know it's clean. But yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a risk every time you dive into, you know, using software someone else made on the internet. Okay, now we're going into bug fixes, updates, etc. We have something pretty cool, and this is something I covered recently as well. You can overclock the Miu Mini Plus, apparently. This was posted by user the Firex on the Miu Mini subreddit, and he made a video on it as well. This guy seems pretty cool. He made a video with some errors, so he unlisted it and re-uploaded the video with corrections. And a lot of people don't do that because that ruins the algorithm for your video if you have to re-upload people want to avoid that as much as possible so the fact that this dude cared enough to do that is awesome and gave credit to the contributor uh schmartzim i, well, I hope i'm saying that right <laughs> but this guy um, wrote a little outline here about what to do and it's pretty cool if you want a summary uh user matsava or mats va there's like no we need spacing and punctuation for these names. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing them, but yeah. Apparently, drastic overclocks uh, the Miu Mini Plus and the Miu Mini by default to 1500 megahertz. You can push the regular Miu Mini up to 1600 and it should be stable. And the Miu Mini Plus, you can push to 1800 and it should be stable. So if it's crashing, you can lower it. And there's really generally no risk in that the person who tested it saw that there was really no increase in terms of power usage. The battery life should be roughly the same. So this is mainly for, for me, DS emulation. If the game is running a little bit choppy, you can try overclocking your Miu Mini uh, to 16 for the OG and then to 1800 for the Plus. I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, you can also write a text file and then just put in the clock speed you want. Uh, CPU clock.txt, I think, in the RetroArch folder. Yeah. Okay. This is from One Quarter Life in the Legion Go subreddit. Uh, apparently, Bazite has almost full feature parity with SteamOS for the Lenovo Legion Go. Uh, Bazite is a Linux based operating system, and it seems to run fairly smooth and have almost all the features as SteamOS. So if you want, you know, Linux or Steam OS on your Lenovo Legion Go, you can totally install it and it seems to work very well. Now, let's say I want to keep Windows. Guess what? You can dual boot Bazite and Windows. This is posted by YouTuber channel Aru. And this guy is pretty good. It's not too hard. You don't have to be tech savvy to do this, but I feel like it might be a little bit too much for someone who's not tech savvy. For me, it's going to be no breeze. I feel like it's going to be easy for a large uh, crowd who's used to doing this sort of stuff. But I read enough of the subreddit to realize that a lot of people are not good with tech. So this may be a little bit, a little bit uh, beyond your ability. But yeah, if you're not confident, I wouldn't recommend doing this because you can ruin your handheld. Uh, but if you're comfortable, there's a very nice guide where you can follow step by step. Okay, I thought this was cool as well. We got user the ACW on the Steam Deck subreddit. I saw a few other people post this video as well. And this is from the YouTube channel ED4T. This guy is running Android natively on a Steam Deck. Now, I'm not entirely sure why you would want to do that, but I, th I can't think of a few use cases. But I feel like for most people, this is not going to apply. But yeah, you can run it natively on the Steam Deck. It's sort of similar to flashing it for dual booting with Windows and stuff. So if you want to check it out, you totally can. Okay, this one I thought might be cool. Uh, this is posted by Fancy Asian on the Steam, uh, Steam Deck subreddit. I forgot someone linked this post. I forgot who it was. But essentially, if you have problems charging your Steam Deck, one thing you can do is put it into shipment mode and then plug the charger back in and power on. Yeah, I realized that. <laughs> There's a lot of problems with these devices. Even high-end devices usually have problems. This one I see a lot where it's like, I can't charge my Steam Deck. Um, yeah, also I heard a Steam, Steam Deck's dock, the official one, may have some issues. It's kind of weird because people 
use a find and then other people where it will not work and then they have to use third party docs but then other people have an experience where the third party docs don't work so it, it <laughs> i don't know no i don't know why it's so inconsistent but yeah okay i thought this was cool this is essentially an ad post in disguise this is posted by user bortega and they have a business modding this stuff so i was like well this is cool and i look further into it essentially just a soft ad <laughs> It was really cool because they replaced the RAM, uh, the screen, uh, Wi-Fi 6. I think they add in hall, hall uh, sensor joysticks, and it's cool. There's a video here. The channel is slick, slick buys mods and repairs, and it's actually a very impressive mod. So most of this stuff I can do, but this, I don't think I can do this. I'm not confident enough, so he swaps out the RAM. And uh, yeah, you put the new chip on here. You have to line it up perfectly and then use a heat gun to solder it in, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I would break the device here. Like, I'm semi-confident about just doing general teardowns. I'm okay at soldering, but this level, I can't do it. So I was like, that's cool. That's cool. Okay, this is a cool tip. If you have an Odin 2 and you're like, man, I wish the screen could zoom out a little bit, uh, you can do that by going into uh, the settings, enabling developer mode by tapping on the build number. I do this for my phone so I can download videos from it a lot easier. And then here you can search for smallest width and change to 560. Uh, the guy mentioned that if you go higher, you might get some bugs. So some posted by user DN00. Other people seem to be having issues with that, so I posted it. Okay, now we have this. This is for Melon DS on the Odin 2. This was a question posted by Secret Activity 5679. And the reason why I posted this was I don't like playing DS like this on my Steam Deck. I like this layout the best. And if other people want to do it, this guy found a way to set it up. This is by user Seltos. You go to core options, screen, set screen layout to hybrid top or bottom, then set hybrid small screen to duplicate. So if you want those settings, the post is here. You can take a look at it. Um, yeah, this is pretty good. Uh, I played DS games on the Mew Mini Plus and I was like, this is okay. I played on the Steam Deck much better, but it's not better than a regular DS. I tried playing Trauma Center. You need a device where you can use a stylus easily, just any cheap stylus. And um, yeah, it's, the, the DS just works better. The, the ergonomics on it is pretty good. Okay, this is some advice too. So this is posted by Tur Turtle in Time. Got a question about the R36S. Uh, if you have one and you want to use a custom operating system, there's a user maintained uh, image. The user is Noricus, and most people use this image for the R36S. So if you want that, I can just link this thread and you can click on it and find it. It's going to be right here. A lot of people are buying it. So if you wanted to experiment with custom uh, OS right there, it's based on Arc OS, I think. Okay, now this is a funny bug, but if you have it, you'll know what cost it. This is posted by user Prometheus D12 in the Legion Go subreddit. And as you can see here, it's saying that, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> 16 terabytes of games installed. This is a bug caused by Halo Master Chief. Uh, there's some differing reasons as to why, but this guy is saying that the Halo 3 and 4 multiplayer DLC is causing it specifically for this person. I think there's the same issue on the Steam Deck, and that was caused by workshop items. So if you uninstall that, that goes away. But I don't think it actually affects the device. But if it does, you can just remove those DLCs. All right, finally, on to user creation slash post. Uh, this one is from Fresh Noob ACC. First game post, uh, I mean, first game completed post. And the reason I posted this is, they're using an R36S and they beat Half-Life on it. Bro, I think it's amazing that you can buy like a sub $40 handheld and then play a PC game on it where, you know, whenever it came out, you had to spend hundreds of dollars to get that PC and now you can experience it in a very horrible form factor. I think that's pretty awesome. Technology is, is truly amazing. Okay, this one I thought was crazy, but this is from user belldandy 561 on the Retroid subreddit. And this guy, this, you think it's a pocket flip? Nah, dude. 
This guy made a massive heat sink. So this guy was theorizing that the heat made the plastic brittle and that's why it was causing it to crack. And this guy was saying that the thermals are way better now. I think people were giving him a hard time, but honestly, like if you're happy with this and this is what you wanted to do, more power to you. Like it doesn't make sense to make people mount the device in a way that you want to. It's what they wanted to do and it works for them. You know what? That's fine. Does it look hideous? Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. But if it works, it works. All right, this is from user Popeye's Wet Cactus from the Legion Go subreddit. And this guy made a little light shield for his Legion Go. He says his wife was being bothered by the light. And the reason I, I brought this up was, hey man, if it works, it works. You know, if you got a 3D printer, if you got cardboard, you can make something out of cardboard. Uh, you know, you can make a fix for every situation. Now, obviously, if you're paying a lot of money for these devices, they should be almost perfect. But um, for the cheaper handhelds that have issues, there's always a workaround, you know, if you're willing to put in a little bit of work and creativity. Not that you should, but that's a trade-off. Anyways, he has the print file if you want it. I think it looks pretty okay. It looks pretty dope. Speaking of 3D printed fixes, here's one from Aero0231 on the Legion Go subreddit. So apparently the top firing speakers aren't ideal. And they made these little cute, uh, it looks like ears almost, which redirects the sound towards you. And this clips onto the top. Now there is an easier solution. You can use an app to increase the volume of the device. User Grandad215 suggested using FX sound and you can make the sound 10 times louder. And another person recommended a different app. It's called Equalizer APO. And this is posted by user Demon, Demon Corpse 20 uh, but yeah, so these devices aren't perfect, but it is what it is. All right, it's going to be the end, fellas. Wow, a lot of news to cover here. But yeah, uh, I like reading through the subreddits. I like immersing myself in this world of handhelds. But yeah, I think it's pretty neat. Uh, there are some news items I saw. I didn't get to cover it. I'll put it in the next video. But yeah, <laughs> it's never ending. Because that's going to be it. I am, I am personally looking forward to picking up an M17. Apparently, MinUI works on the third revision now. I saw the update uh, by Sean. The update says that it fixed the input issues that it was having on revision the revision 3 models. I'm going to pick it up. I think the screen got improved as well. I saw the revision 1 or revision 2 review from Taki. And the screen looked very poor where it was like a plastic... Uh, protect the cover over the actual LCD display and there's a huge gap and now I think it's laminated so I think it's it's stuck to the LCD display itself but yeah for 33 ish dollars I feel like you can get a pretty good experience out of it so I want to test it out with MinUI I'm going to wait until March ish to buy it and then the Datafrog SF2000 I saw a new colorway I wanted to pick it up. It was a yellow one. It was like a yellow green one. And that one I wanted to pick up to test out multi-core. I haven't heard any updates, but it was getting to the point where it was on almost the same as stock OS. But I haven't heard any news about that. I want to check that later. But if you can run G Game Boy Advance and Super Nintendo full speed on custom firmware or custom operating system, uh, I think that'll be great. Uh, another thing, I heard that Kariki or uh, Barocera on the RG35XXH is pretty good. Anyways, uh, that's going to be it. I am putting a lot of work and effort into making other videos. I made the Mew Mini Plus review and I made a guide on uh, playing DS games in the Mew Mini Plus. I have more content planned. I want to make a review on the M17 with MinUI because I think it'll be a great budget option for people who want to emulate up to PS1 but don't have a lot of money and like horizontal form factor and then I think the data frog will be great for kids it, as long as the battery problem is fixed I heard that the newer revisions have protected cells but I gotta I gotta check for myself unfortunately I don't have the equipment to do so so I'll I'll see if I can find a way 
Okay, before I keep rambling, thank you so much for dropping by and watching. I really do appreciate it. If there's anything I can do to change the format to improve it for you guys, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. I like doing it this way. I would like to condense it into fewer news items and do a better job of going over it in detail, but I like this. I like this format. It's fine for me. Okay, now I'm going to I'm going to hop off cuz I've been grinding YouTube content all day every day. <laughs> I got more videos to make. I'm going to cover Lightyear Frontier and the Pacific Drive. Um, I don't know if that's, those videos are going to come out. I have a Pal World video in mind. My last one or second to last one. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff. I'm going to eventually go into making my own Game Boy Color game. So we'll see about that. All right, that's going to be it. As always, hope you guys are staying safe and seeing out there. And I'll catch you guys next time.